coming up, coming up, we was in our drop. Mama didn't say, mama didn't have no bank account. Where your heart is, it's where your treasure at. She put the money in her treasure. Chest, like an unborn. I'm trying to make it out. A debt. I was afraid to check my bank balance. It brought the weight of stress. I'm trying to make it out the mousetrap so I can live and give. But I just do a little. I got my college degree. Now I'm a student of the game to be debt free. <laughs> thinking about, thinking about, uh, but Jeopardy. But kids, kids, I ain't trying to move people, just trying to stay paid and save. I don't forget to act my wage. My ancestors were slaves on that boat. Now I'm trying to own a ship. Steve Nash, this debt living life gone past. Can I bank on that statement? Is debt too much to ask? If so, may I set up a payment plan? You know what day it is. It's found in Jesus. You know what day it is. Focus Friday. What's good, my people? You know what day it is. Focus Friday. Topic is money. Money. You might know what it is. Bread. Cheddar, moolah, pesos, green. What do you call money? So months ago, my friend encouraged me to enroll in today Ramsey's Financial Peace University. It has blessed my life so much. I respect Dave so much that I started calling him Uncle Dave. You see, Dave doesn't just give out advice about money, but he talks about biblical principles concerning money. First off, I want to say that being in debt is not a good look. No, 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 no. God hates debt. Our sins put us in debt with God, and God had a plan to pay off for our debt through his son, Jesus. He made a sacrifice for us. And when it comes to debt, we gotta have that same mindset our creator had. We got a plan, and we got a sacrifice to get out of debt. We got a plan to give ourselves a better life, and our kids. If you're in debt, that means that you're a slave towards the lender. Proverbs 22, seven says, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The system is set up to get us in debt. And the worst thing is that many people die in debt. So the people that you owe money to, they like, hey, if they died in debt, then it means that their kids will die in debt because if they don't know how to handle money, then more than likely their kids don't. This is not the way God intended things to be. You see, God is a God of blessing. He's a God of ownership. He wants the best for his children. And God wants us to be creative and have ownership. So let's talk about how I deal with money. The first thing I do is before I get my paycheck is that I get out my budget spreadsheet and I put in there everything that my money needs to go to. John Maxwell said that budgeting is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. The first thing that I do is that I tithe. I'm a man of faith, a man of God, and their principle has taught me a lot. The nation of Judah stopped paying tithes to God. They stopped giving God 10% of their produce, their gold and silver. Check this out, Malachi 3.8. Should people cheat God? Yeah, you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When do we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheating me. They were under a curse due to them not giving to God <laughs> what he gave to them in the first place. And he only want 10% of it. You see, tithe means 10th. Give 10% of your income to your local church. You see, tithing has taught me to give towards something bigger than myself. And once I had this habit established, the Lord blessed me with more to be more generous. So now I give not just to my local church, but other charities and other ministries and other causes. And if you're not tithing, you are using that money for something not really significant. What you are using it for is mainly temporary. The next thing I do is I use the envelope system. Shout out Uncle Dave for that. It's really blessed my life in a major way. We live in a swipey, swipey world. We just swiping and swiping and swiping. Debit card, credit card, all that stuff. The system make it seem like the swiping is easier, but it really made my life harder because I don't even know where my money is going sometimes. I'm just swiping and swiping. Uncle Dave said that the best way to handle money is to feel money. 
So let's say in my spreadsheet that I put down, I want to spend $200 on groceries for the month. So when it's time to buy groceries, I go to my envelope that I put my $200 in. I don't go and use my debit card. I know that I got my grocery money in the envelope. A lot of times I don't even use all the money for the groceries for the month. So I just throw it towards my savings. You smart. This might seem outdated and kind of silly, but it works for me and it helps. Let's talk about what not to do with money. Uncle Dave has really encouraged me to do this. Do not lend money to family members. No, 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 no. When family owes you money, and you go to family get-togethers with many of your family members and y'all got a big dinner going on, it's food everywhere, but that cousin over there owe you money. And you looking at him like, look at him over there with them new J's on that cost $500, but he owe me $75. I should go over there and step on him. You got that cousin to owe you money. You got the uncle over there to owe you money. Even your grandma probably owe you money. When folks owe you money and they don't pay you back, they really saying that we don't care about your well-being. We straight now, we good. Good luck. If you're going to lend family members money, let it be a gift. Let it be a gift so you're not respecting anything in return. Thanks Uncle Dave for teaching me that. If you keep lending money out to your family and keep lending to friends and family or whoever, you are opening a door for them to say to themselves like, well, okay, then every time we get in a crisis, we can just call so-and-so and so-and-so. They gonna give us money. Every time they get in a crisis, they coming to you when it was their fault for overspending. They will make their problems your problems. So that's a little bit of how I handle money. Um, I would encourage you out there, if you're young or old and you are searching for knowledge and wisdom about how to handle money, God's way, I would encourage you to sign up for Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace class. The link is in my description below. They talk about many other things that I can't cover in this video. They talk about how to teach your kids how to handle money, they talk about how to get out of debt. They talk about you know, the right insurance to get, 401ks and how to buy a house and all of that. So it's in my description. It's Focus Friday. Thank y'all for watching. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. God chooses to work through money to change and transform us. For some of you, he's going to use this issue of money to heal your marriage. For some of you, he's going to use this issue of money to put discipline in your life in a place and in a way that you never dreamed you would see it. You're going to make different choices after having gone through this. It absolutely works.